Hello, I'm Pete Sumrall, and today we have an exciting teaching by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall on Demons and Deliverance. In this series, we will be exposing the occult and many other works of the devil. So stay tuned because you won't want to miss this incredible teaching on Demons and Deliverance. Christendom and Western civilization are entering their final warfare before Armageddon. In these deliverance studies of principalities and powers, we will be exposing the occult, revealing knowledge of the doctrines, words, rites, eulogies, phrases, and definitions that demon worshipers use. The only intelligent way to interpret our times is to present a biblical interpretation. Jesus prophesied that his church shall prevail. In Matthew 16, verse 18, he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Today, the church must rise up to the greatest action of its entire history. I certainly want to welcome you to this most exciting class. I believe it grows more exciting uh, every, every class. And we are very thankful for those other than our class who enjoy these lessons. That they're sent out on cable networks, they're sent out to Bible colleges on a very special uh, TV tape, and uh, also sent out to many television stations. And, and so before uh, this class terminates, it will possibly have four to six million uh, students. And so you are the foundation stones of the class, the beginning of it, and we say thank you. We love you, we appreciate you, and we're so glad that you're here uh, right now. I have a very firm uh, belief that uh, we should learn to say prayers such as this, that I now renounce all spiritism, that I now renounce Satan and Satanism, that I now renounce and denounce all forms of demon worship, that I renounce completely and absolutely reincarnation as a lie from the devil. And I renounce ESP, extrasensory perception, because it opens a door in my, in my life uh, to where the devil could walk in, and therefore I refuse it. And I renounce all forms of palm reading, fortune telling, sorcery, Ouija boards, hypnotism, and so forth. Since as I renounce it in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and especially by the blood of Jesus. I feel that in renouncing these things, we are making a public statement to the devil and to anyone else exactly where we stand in relation to these, and also that we are not ignorant concerning the devil's devices. May I bless you, please. We thank you that we can come into the Word of God and know the truth, because it was the Lord Jesus himself who said, and the truth shall set you free. Nothing is so liberating on the face of this earth as truth. Uh, truth stamps out superstitions. Truth stamps out fears. And we are thankful for the truth of God, and we ask you to make this truth live within the hearts of these that study. And we thank you for it. Amen. God bless you. God love you. We're so delighted to see you. Our, our lesson today uh, is related to, are there monsters in the spirit world? Uh, you would be amazed at the number of people who tell me that they see creatures in the spirit that are devastating, ugly, awful, terrible, wicked. <laughs> I have never seen one, uh, but I can only see uh, what they tell me. And most of these are very capable people, very substantial people, like I hope I'll be telling you here about an attorney who is a master attorney. I mean, he's a, he is a criminal lawyer that's of high degree, and also he's an alcoholic. And I laid hands on him to cast that thing out of him. And he told me, he said, I see ugly faces all around me. He says, I see them as well as I can see your face. And I thought that was very unusual for a, a university trained, a man that has stood up in some of the great cases of a certain state in this country, in, in the law courts, uh, to bear witness to this type of thing. Shall we begin in the book of Revelation, chapter 16, 
If you'd open uh, your Bibles, please, and beginning in verse 12. And you that have your syllabi, of course, you can study straight from your syllabus. All right? And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And so here's a creature from another world, the Bible here calls it an angel, that causes our great river to dry up, a river that's known from the Garden of Eden to the end of the world, the river Euphrates. Verse 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. They came up out of that river. Isn't that something? Uh, they didn't need to breathe or they couldn't have been in the bottom of the river. And these were spirits. And it says they were unclean spirits. And they reminded him of frogs, but uh, that was only a reminder, croaking, noisy. And from the mouth, they came up out of the mouth of the dragon. These spirits came forth. The dragon is, is the devil and Satan. And out of the mouth of the beast, and he is the Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the false prophet, who will be the religious segment of the, the trinity that will, that will rule in the great tribulation. Uh, for they are the spirits of devils. <laughs> you should underline that. Uh, when God says a thing is so, then it's so. It says these creatures are spirits of devils. And look, look what it says, working miracles. You see, uh, you, you, you can't just go around accepting every miracle. You've got to accept miracle that's related to God and not the devil which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world. Notice it says first, kings of the earth. Uh, oftentimes, almost every time, the devil hits the highest when he can. He, he doesn't shoot for the lower echelon. He seeks for the highest. To destroy America, he says, shoot at the president. <laughs> get the president. Uh, get the congressmen. Get the, get the governors, you know. To the kings of the earth, the rulers of the earth, and the whole world, and to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And, and so there will actually be uh, monsters in the spirit world who finally will gather the whole world to the final battle called the Battle of Armageddon. It will not be a normal thing, human thing, natural thing, but there will be invisible spirits, invisible to the natural eye, that will gather them together. So there are monsters in the spirit world. My first question uh, to you, and to answer it is, is a person wrong, a teacher as myself, in exposing Satan's work? Now, and there, there are some people who feel that exposing the works of Satan uh, could become a form of exalting Satan. Now, I feel that God is the greatest exposer of all evil and that he says more about the devil than any other person does. So Jesus Christ and God uh, exposes evil more than any anyone else in the universe. And, and if they do it, uh, you have a right to do it. <laughs> if you believe it, say amen. Uh, and, and so you, you've got to accept it that way. We must know and understand the principalities and the powers of the spirit world, or, or we are at a disadvantage <clears throat> in promoting the kingdom and delivering people from the devil or doing any of the work of God. If you're ignorant, you know, about your enemy, in the great world of business, if you don't know your competition, you're almost finished before you begin. You've got to know who your competition is or you don't know how to function, you know? And so in the spirit world, if we don't know our competition, which is the devil and his angels, how are we going to perform? It is an impossibility. We must know the true story of how devils became devils. You better believe it. And we must also know the termination and the end of all demon worship. Where do you go when you do that? It's very interesting. We must also know the judgments that are coming upon the netherworld spirits. Where are they going to go? What's going to happen to them? The Bible tells you, and we believe the Word of God. And so we hope that each one of us will have a, a knowledge of this thing and, and that we shall function. And the thing is this, they're helpless before us. I mean, if, if we had a monster against us that we, that we were victims of, well, I'd be a little more careful about handling this thing. But now the Word of God tells us time and time again that we are the winners and that we are the victors and that we have nothing to fear, excepting fear itself. And that if you and I get a hold of this thing, that all power in this heaven and earth can be channel, channeled through us from the Lord Jesus Christ. I, it's been my you know, part of life, that to visit uh, many heathen lands. 
up to the top of Tibet, in the jungles of, of, of South America, in Indonesia and India and places where, uh, where, where they have pagan temples. And, and I've been able to see these things firsthand. And, and we've been able to see their gods. Some of their gods are monstrous, frightening, both in their size and in their looks. <laughs> you, you, you have some pictures of them in your book there. They're oftentimes part animal, part human, very often. And the people are taught to worship these monsters of demonic origin. You see, that's what we are against. And that's why we have a class like this. Set those people free. That's nothing but demon superstition. And, and, and we don't have to tolerate it. Uh, we have within us the powers of liberation to set people free from such stuff. One of the monsters of the spirit world, as we read to you in our text, is called the dragon. Now, it's very interesting to me that the imperial throne of China, and I've been there and I saw it with my own eyes, is called the dragon throne. I've, I've been through the Forbidden City uh, there in Peking, North China, and, and uh, I saw personally the dragon throne. And that dragon throne uh, is made up of a network of dragon heads and dragon bodies. Totally, totally. Carved magnificently. <laughs> Value not to be estimated because the great uh, monarchs and emperors of China sat upon that throne. But when you make your very throne of dragons and you read in the Bible who the dragon is, you can tell who you're worshiping. Now, come on, think right about the thing. They didn't make a throne of lambs that everywhere was a lamb's head or a lamb's body. They made a throne of dragons. They have one year every year that's called the dragon year. They have about a cycle of about 13 years. They have the dog cycle, the snake cycle, and, and all of that business. And then they have one of those years that is the dragon year, the year of the dragon. And, and, uh, and that year, they expect certain things to happen and certain things to take place uh, because of the, the dragon has a year of his own. Can you imagine giving one of your years to the dragon? Many people testify and witness to the fact that in their experiences in temple worship, that they, 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 they see serpents, and some of them are the size of dragons, very frightening uh, for them in, in areas where they worship that type of thing. There are monsters in the spirit world. That's what we're talking about. And, and some of this you can find naturally. I mean, you go to North India, and, and you find the goddesses that, that, that worship the serpent, and, and they'll bring one of those deadly, venomous uh, uh, serpents and, uh, and, and, and stand there and, and give it milk and play with it until the serpent is something or another, and they reach over and kiss its head. And, and, and worship. And if the priestess uh, is st struck by the serpent, of course, she dies instantly. And they say, well, she didn't fast enough or didn't clean herself up enough for the God because the serpent is a God, you see. And uh, I mean, I've seen movies of this, and I wouldn't want to see one personally, uh, where they're actually worshiping, you know, the serpent. Uh, T.L. Osborne uh, told us a, a fantastic story uh, from Dahomey in, in, in uh, Africa. And it, the country is now called, uh, called uh, Bening, and that there is a tribe there that worship the snake, and they have regular snake worship. He says in every house in that area that they have their own private snake in their home that they feed and prepare a nest for that snake to live in. And that if a cart or a bus or something other hit a snake, the people will burn that person's house. He's killed a god. So you wouldn't want to see one crossing the road and hurt him. And many of these serpents are uh, venomous and poisonous, and if it bites its owner, or someone else even, and they die, the people say, well, the gods are against him. He should die. <laughs> Bitten by a snake, they say, you ought to die. Uh, T.L. Osmond's wife, Daisy, went to Dahomey to set up a special crusade meeting, and she saw a serpent priest, a priest of the serpent religion, near his temple, and he had a huge, awful, poisonous snake, rile around his, his head, neck, and his body down here, and his tail, an enormous beast. And, and he was looking at her and, and, and saying, this is our God, a frightening-looking monster. 
And the anointing of God uh, came upon Daisy, and she said, give me that snake. <laughs> and the priest handed it over to her. Uh, he didn't know what that snake would strike her, and she'd be dead, you see. But she took the snake, and the moment that Daisy's, Daisy Osborne's hand took that snake, it became as straight as a pole and as stiff as a pole, just took right straight out. And she held it and showed it to all the people. And, and of course, that they, they were almost petrified when they saw that snake had no curls in it, no bends in it, just right straight in her hand. And she turned to a national minister there who was almost scared to death too, and she said, take this snake. And reluctantly, he reached and got it, and it was the same in his hand. It just stood right straight out. It was not curled or coiled in, in any way. And, and after he had had it for a while, he handed it back to Daisy. And Daisy handed it back to the priest and said, take it. And, and Daisy says, when that serpent got into that priest's hands, he says, it was furious. He says, it was crazy. It, the, the priest couldn't hardly stand it. It went around his arms and around his chest and around his belly and, and said it was like a wild snake around him. And said, she pointed her finger at that priest and, and said, my God made all of creation, and we are not afraid of your snake, God. And because of that, there was a great revival that came to that area, a great revival. It reminds us a story, of course, in Exodus chapter 7, where Moses uh, was standing before Pharaoh, and he caused his, his staff to become a serpent. And, and when he did, the, ma the magicians of Egypt did, and then his serpent swallowed those up, that they might know that the great I am, that he is God. Thousands of people have witnessed dreadful creatures in the spirit world. They're frightening and they're menacing. And, and we, so we are right on the ball by telling you, in the spirit world, you can see things that are terrible. You don't have to. Uh, you, you can say in the spirit world, I refuse any manifestation, and they cannot manifest. God's people can do that. But the devil's people are tormented in such a way, in a, in a terrible way. Uh, we, we have known uh, in this country uh, where people have seen awful uh, things in the spirit world and where they've been hurt by them. A lady in Gary, Indiana, told me that she had, uh, that a, a monster uh, of, a, of a thing, she could see it and it would beat her up and it bit her uh, all over her body. And uh, her husband said he had seen the bite marks all over the body and that she showed me those on her arms and on her legs uh, where you could see things like teeth marks going deep down into her skin. I prayed for her. But uh, the husband uh, did, not, did not serve God. Uh, he did not permit her to go to church regularly and things like that. And we understood later that woman died. And she was just a young woman and a very beautiful uh, Italian type a young lady, a very gorgeous person, and died young. She would have been 30 years old when she was dead. And, and here she had been tormented by the power of that, and she could see that monster, and, and she was gone. Now, in, in the spirit world, uh, there are those that we call poltergeist, poltergeist. And I have a clipping uh, where parents, I mean, of the last few days, uh, sent away their own eight-year-old son out of their house because the poltergeist overturned furniture and smashed dishes and tore up the house. And this Mr. and Mrs. Charles Burden uh, consulted a medium, a spiritist medium, and was told that their retarded son attracted the spirits. To, to, to destruction. And the medium said that the poltergeist especially uh, hurts retarded children who have no resistance to them. And Mrs. Burden said that dishes were flying all over the house, the television set was overturned, a heater uh, actually flew across the room, and she called the, the police who witnessed this and, and, and had no explanation for it, and a, and a, and a spirit medium uh, said, uh, I, I think you better move out of the house you are not spiritual enough to contain what takes place here. The newspaper said that Mr. Burden was recorded as saying, I never believed in ghosts before, but I'm convinced that there's a, rot there's a rotten spirit about. Yeah, and he just about got it right. A vile spirit. We have no dishes left, he said, what, whatsoever. He said they've broken up all the dishes in our home. All we wish to do by a newspaper report like that that I, that I keep is to tell you that these things do exist, you know. I just want you to be aware, but not to be afraid. We're all, uh, you'd be amazed at the things, that, the problems that people bring to a minister. I mean, they come to me from New York State, from California, from Texas, from all over our total nation, and, and they do see these things. We want to teach God's people they don't have to put up with it. 
if those two people uh, had, been, had been real, wonderful Christians, they could have protected their son and protected their house and stopped the whole thing. I have done it. I have caused the poltergeist to stop uh, tearing up furniture and, and disturbing people in their homes because he that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. you got to know these things. And, and that's another great reason for serving God. Now, we find uh, these things are all around the world with many different names. For example, among the great Arab nations, they call them jinn, J-I-N-N. Arabs teach us spirit creatures who, who they call sometimes the watchmen of hell. The Muslim believe the jinn are both male and female, that they were created from fire. You see, they, 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 because they're in the spirit world, they don't know what to do with them. The Muslims believe that the jinn is a supernatural being that can take on human form or animal form. And they believe the jinn can influence human affairs. And, and so, uh, 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 to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have to put up with that. But it isn't in one part of the world where this happens. The total world is uh, engulfed in these uh, netherworld creatures, and they don't have to be. The power of God can set anybody free. The power of God can loose you from it, and you can stop any and all uh, manifestations of these type of things. Uh, your question to me, of course, is, uh, Dr. Sumrall, have you seen such a monster? And I'd have to ask, answer you by saying, no, no, I have not. Uh, in my many years of experience in, in dealing with people who are hurt in the world of spirit, uh, that the devil has often uh, spoken to me. I don't mean an audible voice. I have not, not heard an audible voice, but spoken to me in, in a communication with my spirit saying, permit me to manifest myself. <laughs> Let me show you who I am. And I have repeatedly said, no, I will not accept any manifestation from the devil at all, totally. I will not permit any manifestation. Now, when I say that this could have happened a thousand times, it's no exaggeration. But I will not permit a manifestation. And, and the devil cannot manifest himself unless you are a, either a slave to him, serving him, or he receives permission from you to do so. You see, you're actually the boss. You read Genesis chapter 1 and, and verses 26 and 27 and 28, and you will discover uh, that God created man to have dominion. It says so right there, dominion on the face of this earth. And so we possess the dominion, and, and it cannot be taken from us if you will utilize it, if you will use it, and if you will say, here, I'm standing on the promises of God, and I believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to set us free, and I believe in the force and the power of the great commission that was given by the Lord Jesus before he went back to heaven, and I'm standing upon it, then there's no force that can come against you. Uh, there, there just isn't one. You can always be free. I mentioned a few moments ago praying for a professional man. And, and, and when you get these, not from an ordinary person, but a highly educated person, and, and a person that, that deals in things like criminal law, that has to keep his mind on facts and figures, and you start relieving him of, del of delirium tremens and alcoholism. It's amazing how there are great men in our country today, in government and in business, that are their slaves to alcohol. And, and I was called to his house to set him free. And, and, as, and as he was getting free, that thing was going out of there, uh, he said, I saw all kinds of ugly faces crowding around me in a very menacing manner. And when he told me that, I commanded them to leave, and I said, where? And he said, they're gone. <laughs> you see, as once that I was aware of them, they could not stay because I rebuked them and commanded them to leave, and they had to obey. You are in the driver's seat, and you are the victorious one. And you don't have to put up with those things. Now, you can tell others that because there are literally, I, I imagine there are many people in the insane asylum today who would like to be free, and, and they don't know how to be free. One of the classic examples of this was in the, in the country of the Philippines when a little girl uh, was molested by an evil spirit that she called the thing. She didn't know what to name it. And it was a, a thing that she said stood about 10 foot tall, and it would bite her. Now, the six doctors that took care of her could see the, the, the deep marks, you know, they could see the deep marks, but they couldn't see the monster. But they could feel his presence. When he came, they would look at one another and said, that thing's here, <laughs> you know? They could feel it, but they, but they didn't see it. But she could see it. But from the day that I set her free, <laughs> he wasn't around anymore. 
When I commanded him to leave, he had to leave. And, and she was free from that thing and stayed free. She's still free today from that thing. So God's children, God's people, can set people free from the monsters of the spirit world and can cause them to leave never to come back, that they are totally, absolutely, and completely free. Now, with this girl, and I, I ought to teach you the same, uh, we set her free by the Spirit of God, the power of God, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ from this thing that was biting her. But it still was in the area. She could look, she could see it off out there as if it wanted to return, you know. And I told her, I said, now, wait a minute. You don't have to put up with that either. But I said, you need to learn how to rebuke because I can't stay with you all the time. And we taught her how to rebuke the thing and say, you go, go now. And, and so she could say the same thing and it worked. So whoever you are, you don't have to put up with noises in your home. You don't have to put up with hurts on your physical body. Uh, you don't have to put up with your furniture moving around the house. There is one greater. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Savior of all mankind. He is the love of your soul, and He is a setter free. <laughs> he will set you free by His mighty power. He wants to. He wants to do it right now. He wants to set you free. In our land today, there are literally millions of people who are being hurt by these creatures that cannot be seen with a natural eye. And it's about time God's people woke up to the fact that the Lord has sent us forth as the deliverers of the people and that it is our, our duty to set men free by His mighty power. And if you wish to know how to set people free, we want to teach you how. And if you want to love people, we want to teach you how to do it. And we want you to know this, that He that is in us is so much greater than the devil and any of His works and that God wants you to have the power of the Lord Jesus within you to set yourself free and to set others free and to bless others, you can have this residing within you. And we want you to enjoy this blessing and to enjoy this power in Jesus' name. Are you ready for it? If you're ready for it, then God is ready for it. And I'm, I'm ready now uh, to bless you and to help you. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, I, I ask you right now to manifest your power to manifest your spirit in Jesus' name. I break every force of evil. I destroy every imagination of the devil. I put to flight all the monsters of the unseen world, and I command them to obey the voice of the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see, broadcasting is privileged to bring you these life-changing messages by Dr. Lester Sumrall. If you found today's teaching valuable, please consider supporting one or more of these programs and have your name added as a sponsor. Call the number on the screen to find out more. I'm Pete Summerall. Thanks for watching.